It's kiln opening time. Yet another kiln opening. I've been doing um, a lot of glaze firing. It's a small kiln, so probably doing about two glazes a week at this point. And um, before we get started, um, there's a thunderstorm in the distance starting up. So it's summer in Florida, which basically means a thunderstorm every day, twice a day, three times, who knows. So there might be some loud thunder bangs in between here. Hopefully I get done with this before it gets here. So, another cone five. Uh, this is a reglaze from the last video you might have seen this piece. Maybe it was two glazes ago. This was the um, goldenrod chino. And I put cedar chino around the rim of it to give it a little more interest. Kind of looks a little bit orange, but gives it a little bit of a more design than it what it had. Um, this one is on white clay, a little spoon rest. That is ice blue coyote. Has some nice texture to it. Looks really good on white clay. This is Mako's green tea. It's on Riverside Grit by high water. And this is a glaze I've had for a long time. This is one of the first glazes that I got. I like it. I mean, it uh, looks a little lighter sometimes, a little darker, and has a lot of movement to it at the same time. It's a good all-around green, if you don't mind that it moves a lot. So this is Cedar Chino on Riverside Grit. And that's the first time that I've tried that on, uh, on this clay does look uh, kind of different, but not too bad. And this piece is pretty weird. I kind of went for a weird look. I don't know why that came out so much lighter than this part of it. It's um, Amico's Black HF1, and it does look blue a lot. I know it's over another glaze here, but it just has a tendency to look blue. So this is um, Ancient Jasper, Potter's Choice. That's black over um, deep olive green, which is also Potter's Choice. And uh, just Ancient Jasper all the way around on the back. And Ancient Jasper always seems to break to a gray and then a darker um, gray kind of blue into black and with the red streaks in it. It's a kind of an interesting glaze. I haven't found too many uses for it, but it is kind of funky. Okay, the next level, it's only a half shelf, a bunch of tiles here. Fish tile, and this has ice blue on um, Riverside Grit, which is just kind of a sort of dull brown clay. It has a ton of grog in it. it I've actually th thrown it recently on the wheel, and it, it just, I don't know. It's, it's an okay clay, but I just can't really use it for much. And it looks all right. If you don't mind all that grog that's in it, it's not really meant for throwing. This is Oasis Blue on Riverside Grit, and that's, that blue shows up really well pretty much on any clay. Okay, this is a large piece. Let me explain what this is first. This will be part of something else. Um, I acquired some large um, plaster molds. And all I did with this was just press clay into it. So I didn't use it for slip casting, but it, I mean, it just worked really well as a press mold. This is only part of the mold. And uh, it's a huge, huge mold. It probably weighs, I don't know, 30 pounds on its own. So I'm gonna use this, um, you know, it's gonna be part of something else. So it all has feathers on the face. This is, um, blue opal, or I think it's just called opal, by Coyote, and then the blue ice on the side. And I have to say, this came out really nice. I had no idea what it would look like, because this is Riverside Grit again. And uh, I haven't used either of those glazes on this, so pretty happy with that. And Riverside Grit is good to use on something like this, because it is such a strong clay, with all that grog in it. You can see all the specks. Very, very rough clay. Really not good for a thrown pieces where you're going to feel 
the bottoms. It's just way too rough. But if you glaze it over, it does look pretty good. Okay, this piece is going to be a bird bath. It's showing up pretty light blue. There goes the thunder. It's actually a very dark, bright blue in person, and it's Coyote's Blue Surf. It's a glaze that I don't really like that much, and I still had some left. I thought it would be a good one for a bird bath. I guess the detail shows up well enough on this because this is, again, Riverside Grit. Good, good um, bird bath clay for sure. So um, this glaze always looks really bright blue and it kind of breaks to green. It's hard to see the detail of that, but you will get kind of a green streaking or modeling appearance. But turned out pretty good. So this is uh, something I've been interested in talking about, finding out how it was going to look. These are just some little test tiles. These are the new Amico Celadon glazes. I got four. This one is the lavender. That does look pretty good. It's probably going to look a little bit blue through the camera, but it is definitely a purple lavender color. It's two coats, and it's uh, definitely showing through, so maybe even three coats would could work. It's going to be a really good tile glaze. This is marigold. C60 marigold. Kind of it's a duller than I thought it would be, but I think it still shows up pretty well. And it's on Little Loafer's white clay. I, I don't know what it would do on other clays if it would get lost, but white is a good choice. So this is Weeping Plum, C53. Very nice. I think that might be the best one. And Cobalt, which that one looks exactly like it did online. It kind of covers up a lot more. Still going to be a nice tile glaze, though. Happy with all of those. And you can mix those as well, they say. So that's something to try. Okay, bottom shelf. I see some messy things down here. This is a disaster. This is that alabaster again. That is bizarre. Um, talk about blistering. I just had a small, you know, piece that I threw with um, dark brown clay and it didn't come out that well, so I thought I would use it to test some glazes. Cannot seem to make this alabaster work at all. I'm going to have to check because I have two different alabasters. This looks like alabaster satin, and that's a mess. You can see all the um, blistering and bubbling going on there. So I'm going to have to look into that. I um, haven't been able to make this alabaster. It's like um, Mako. It just it blisters. This is very extreme blistering probably because of the clay. I've never even seen anything look like that out of the kiln so far. Um, weird, very weird. Not really sure what to do about it. I have um, five pounds of it that I use um, from dry. Uh, what else is on here? Deep olive speckle. There was some overlap there with the white. And Art Deco green right here. Just seeing some overlapping. And this is red gold on the dark clay. Not uh, not a great experiment there. So here's a piece that has um, just Art Deco green on dark clay. And I had already done this with some tiles and I really like the look. Really just like the dark um, clay a lot. As long as you can find the right kind of glazes to use. Looks really good. I'm just brushing that on. I don't have that in dry yet. This is Cedar Shino, a little candle holder piece on dark brown clay. I think that looks great on that clay. That's probably my favorite 
use for this glaze is this dark clay. Cedar Shino by Coyote. And here's um, Oasis on the dark clay. And it has um, Opal on the bottom. That came out pretty nice. This piece, um, it looks pretty good through the camera lens. I, there's some um, mistakes on it. I was carving it. It was very thin. got very dry because I was holding it, which I know you're not supposed to do when you're carving. So it broke. You can see right here it broke, and I had to replace that piece. So I'm going to keep this for myself. Um, just a really big fan of Art Deco Green on the uh, dark brown clay. Okay, so I have some a lot of test tiles here. I don't know if I should go through them all or not. Might even have to do it later because I'm not 100% sure what they are. I have to kind of read my notes and stuff on what this is. I believe this is Tourmaline by Potter's Choice on dark brown clay. And that looks pretty good. I haven't liked it on any other clay, but that looks kind of interesting on that clay. And this is oatmeal. So there's a white that actually stayed normal. Um, it is pitted though. And of course it just sort of covered up any detail. But that's oatmeal by Coyote on dark brown. This is um, Art Deco Green over Temaku. Potter's Choice glazes. This one, not sure, because I have to go, oh, this would be, I did test the selenin glazes. This is C53, which I believe was the Weeping Plum selenin glaze over dark clay. That's the Lavender, C56. That gets lost. There's really no reason to do that. It's, it doesn't show up very well. This is Marigold C60, Amico's new salad and glaze. That does look pretty good. I mean, you could you could definitely do something with that. It kind of has a more of a, a yellowy green rather than pure yellow. And this is Oasis over. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to look that up. Interesting, whatever it is, kind of ran. Not too sure. I have to get back to you on that. Because it's the dark clay, I have to use underglaze to label them, and it's, it's sort of hard to read. This one is textured kiwi. I'm kind of surprised that that looks as good as it does because on other darker clays it just hasn't looked very good. I would recommend doing that on the uh, dark clay if you want kind of a green, greenish blue. Very streaky. At cone 5 this will just run. Um, cone 6, forget it, it's going to just really run. And this is just Temaku on its own kind of gets lost. Deep Olive Speckle over Temaku. And that's the Cobalt C20. Too dark, I think. Too dark, but... Turquoise, and this is what happens to turquoise all the time on anything but white clay for me. It just gets all pitted. It looks very dry. Um, I don't know what it is. This is actually coming right out of the bottle, too. So it's not a, it's not a dry glaze, but it just looks very, like it would just flake off. It looks horrible. I haven't been able to do anything with turquoise on dark clay. That's about it for now. Um, the witness cones are showing. Cone 5, 
just starting. It's probably a weak tone five on the bottom. So thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up with the videos. And I will see you next time.